get cancelled for this, eh? And I... <laughs> You're paralyzed. That's right. Hello. We're back. We're back, and today I'm in control. I have no idea what's happening. So basically, the idea behind this is that people always want to know about what it's like to be in hospital with a spinal cord injury. So we're going to tell you the story, and Indy is the quadriplegic. I am the medical professional. So we're essentially swapping positions because I am a medical professional. Right. Martha's in the hospital bed right now, so can she share with me? No. So to set the scene, Indy has just had surgery on her neck and so she's intubated. What is intubated? Like incubated. No, intubated. Put this up your nose. This is your NG tube and this goes into your stomach. So it goes down and into your stomach and that's how they give you food and medication. Come on. <laughs> now this is your extubation tube which goes into your lungs because you A just had surgery and B we don't know if you can breathe by yourself or yet. So this goes all the way into your lungs and breathes for you. It's also seconds as a catheter. <laughs> So put that in your mouth, and then once it's in your mouth, you cannot speak. And so this will be how I woke up from ICU. Good. No speaking. So you've just woken up from surgery, and you're not feeling great, but you remember that you have a date that night. True story. And so, how you communicate is through this board. So, I need you to use your eyes, because you can't move anything, and tell me to call him. So you have to say, call Mm. Uh, no, you can't speak. Uh, you have to use your eyes. Maybe blink. A, B, C, C, A, C, A, <laughs> D, A. Cool, Dan. That's the first thing you did when you woke up. Communicate to someone to call your date. Yeah, my mum. But now you can turn around and switch them back. Okay, let me just check my list that I've done everything that I used to know. While we have Indy in ICU, which is the intensive care unit, it is costing five and a half thousand dollars a day to have you there. Because I had my injury at the age of 19, I'm going to cost the New Zealand government 20.1 million dollars over my lifetime. Shut your mouth. And in New Zealand, there are approximately, on average, about 250 spinal cord injuries a year. So Indy is just one of many joining the cool club. Anyway, that's pretty much it for ICU. There's not much that happens there. So now we're going to extubate her, which means you can pull out your tubes. And now you can speak. Oh, hey! But you also can't move your arms. Okay, now we're transitioning. You can so tell that this is a Sophia directed. <laughs> Now we are in the spinal unit, which is where I spent three months of my life. And this is when it starts to get a little bit more interesting. So, Indy, you can only leave your bed for the toilet and for 20 minutes a day in your wheelchair. Apart from that, you're in bed. And when you're sitting up in bed, you need to wear a binder on top of your top. So straight after your injury, you have really low blood pressure because she's been lying down for, actually I think I lay down for seven days before I could sit up. So this is your first time sitting up. We're gonna get you in a wheelchair for the first time. So pop that on and I'll get you a wheelchair. Whoa, it's hard putting on me, not you. Oh my god, wait. Oh, I can't actually back like you. Yeah, I'm really strong here. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. Okay. By the way, I know how to put this on because I put this on so <laughs> in case you haven't watched our first day in the life. And you won't know that. It's gonna be quite tight. <laughs> oh, it's quite nice. Comfy, eh? Because you can only sit up for 20 minutes a day, you're quite bored and you have to watch daytime TV. Oh no! I hate daytime TV. Same, but I still watched it. She has to watch infomercials. You are going to watch 20 minutes. <laughs> this was an all day thing for me. Finest dust and debris, nothing left behind. I'm actually gonna go ahead and get your mess here. Thank you. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm done. Any what? Any You're a bitch. <laughs> now, we're going to get you up for the first time. We're going to take your blood pressure. Blood pressure, like I said, is a massive thing for spinal cord injuries. So before we get Indy up in her wheelchair for the first time, we'll take, put your arm down. We'll take her blood pressure. <laughs> what do you think your blood pressure is? I have no clue about blood pressure. Okay, spit a random number. 120? Is yeah. that a number? That's a normal blood pressure. <laughs> you're 100 over 66. So you're okay to sit up. You need to be hoisted. Am I actually? Yes. Okay. So here we have... No, get in bed. Oh. <laughs> Indy is now getting into her wheelchair for the first time ever and it's such an exciting experience. So you're gonna hoist her up using the ceiling hoist and lower her down into the chair that has a makeshift cushion on it. I don't even know how to put this on you, little me. By the way, this is how Soph transfers into bed when she's not doing like her own transfers. If I'm lazy. Which is not usually with me because it's more effort to try and teach me how to do this. Okay, ready? Act paralyzed. Wait, 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 what, wait. What I do is I hold on to the um, straps. Okay, yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is fun. It's like a roller coaster. Oh my god! <laughs> ah, this is such a witchy. I haven't even felt it. <laughs> Here, catch. <laughs> If your mom came in right now. Ah! Stop moving! I'm really low are you. Ooh. And then you closer to the chair. No, I'm staying in. How do I stop you? <laughs> From moving. I don't know. I've never done this before. Have you done this to anyone else before? No! <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> Okay. Your character rights. <laughs> Woohoo! The first time I was in a wheelchair, I couldn't move. It was like a pram. It wasn't a wheelchair that I could move around in. So you will not be moving. If okay. you need to go anywhere, I'll push you. You're only allowed to be up for 20 minutes. The reason she's only allowed to be up for 20 minutes, as she moves. <laughs> Now you're paralyzed. The reason she's only allowed to be out for 20 minutes is because they have to make sure that your the skin on your bum is okay and you're not going to get a pressure sore. So, have fun! I don't know what you want me to do. I can't move. Yeah, I know. It's true. So, fine. Do, did you just sit in the chair? Yeah. Talked to my family? Oh. Huh. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, here is your two morning paracetamols. When I was in the hospital, I, um, it's on my medical notes that I refused to take paracetamol because the hospital was sponsored by Panadol. <laughs> because we were all on six tablets of Panadol a day and it did nothing. <laughs> and so I like unbrainwashed other people as well and they refused to take their Panadol. They would have hated you. No, I just actually take it. Yeah, this. you actually take it. You'll be fine. I'm now transitioning from a doctor to a psychologist, and this psychologist kept visiting me. Hi Sophia, I'm the psychologist. So what were the physical things that you used to really like to do, but can't do anymore? Horse riding, running, walking the dog, bushwalks. Ah, oh, okay, and you can't do those anymore? No. I can relate to you. I used to be a ballerina, and then I had a leg injury, and I can't do ballet anymore. And I know exactly how hard it is to go through what you're going through. Mm. See, that's not the same thing. <laughs> that is honestly how our first appointment went. So from that appointment onwards, every time there was a, hi Sophia, are you available? I would say, I refuse. <laughs> oh yeah. I also used to do that to the lady that would come to take my blood tests. <laughs> oh, God. But the one thing I couldn't refuse, while I was in the spine unit, there was a superbug going around the spine unit, and every Monday they had to swab our rectum to see if we had the virus. I just want to ride the thing. You can't ride oh. the thing, you don't get that joy yet. Stop! You're also really heavy. This is really what it's like, Indy. Indy! Should we go and show you another room or something? 
Now we are one month post injury and it is time for Indy to set some goals with me, an occupational therapist. So what does an occupational therapist do? So like a physio helps you to get strength and helps you to learn how to push your wheelchair and get strong and stuff. And an OT helps you like lots of equipment if you need adaptive equipment and stuff. So. And this is actually what happened to me. Okay, hi Sophia. It's time to set some goals. What are your three goals? Walking. Okay. We need to make realistic goals. Oh. <laughs> How about brushing your teeth by yourself? What about feeding yourself? So those are the goals that we wrote down and I was pretty angry about it because it was very belittling. Yeah. And didn't make me feel very positive about my future. Rude. Yeah, rude. Should we put you back into bed? So, you're allowed to sit up to 30 degrees. <laughs> you're behind the <laughs> That's probably. Really? Yes, because your neck hasn't fully healed yet. Yeah, show the binder girl. I couldn't feed myself for the first three months. So my hospital meals would be delivered and then I would just be sitting in bed and I'd have to wait and wait for a nurse to become free to come feed me. So it was cold and disgusting, <laughs> which is ridiculous because they thought that I had an eating disorder while I was in hospital, but I wasn't anorexic. They were just feeding me crap food. <laughs> and also like it's natural to lose weight when you go through trauma and stuff. <laughs> Stop laughing and stop talking because when you're in hospital in the first few months of your injury you have a very high choking risk and I choked lots so my family made it a rule that I wasn't allowed to speak or laugh while I was eating. Stop. <laughs> Especially because I can't cough very well so if I am choking I'm screwed. <laughs> the issue here is because I can't hold the fork but it's just sitting in my hands. Yeah it's go watch the hand function video. Stop talking. Go watch the hand function video before she chokes. <laughs> Indy! If you had to have like an accident story how do you think that you would have a spinal cord injury? Probably like in a show like falling off the stage. I've fallen off the stage more, more than once. <laughs> once I wasn't even dancing I was playing flute. I can't even play the flute. I couldn't even. Okay, now Indy. A big part of being paralysed, a very big part of being paralysed, is that you lose your bowel and bladder function. So now you're going to have to go sit on the toilet for 45 minutes. <laughs> no! 45 minutes. 45 minutes? Minimum. Yep. Have fun. Thanks. And the door stays open. Hi! She's hanging out. She won't want to start to move the bowels. So you can sit there for 45 minutes. So like, even now sometimes it's like over an hour. Oh, all the time. What do you do? Get on the phone. Every second day. Most spinal stop every day, every second day or every third day. Right. By the way, that's the part of being a carer that I don't do. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't know anything right now. How are you going? That's cute. Good. On Instagram. Time for your Panadol. You drink more water taking one pill than I do taking about 15 at once. Not that they're Panadol. You're a prop. Prop only. Jokes I'm drugging back you won't see in the next video. Can I get off the toilet now? Would you like to be at 30 degrees or down flat? 30 degrees please. Yeah, it is nice isn't it? You enjoy the small things in life when you've got nothing to live for. Rude. Something that happens for the first few months in your spinal cord injury is that you get really bad nerve pain where your sensation has been impaired. It's like internal itch. So how we get rid of that is you get something abrasive and you rub it on it. <laughs> it's like sandpaper. And after a while your nerves will stop being like so sensitive. Another weird thing is that the skin on your hands and feet peels off and it is so gross. I don't know why that happens. The body has such weird responses to things like that. You're in hospital and your triceps don't work and you're in a bedroom alone. So when you need help, just imagine there's a buzzer here and when you need help, use your bicep and you slap the buzzer, but because your tricep doesn't work, your arm is stuck there until the nurse comes. <laughs> Beep! But often, 
the nurse is very busy and won't come for about 20 minutes. <laughs> what happens if you miss the buzzer? You're screwed. Did that happen? Yes. <laughs> When I first got to the hospital, they were like, um, we're going to give you, it's like a thumb buzzer. And I was like, well, my fingers don't work, so I can't push a button. And he's like, okay, we'll give you a foot buzzer instead. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. this was in this spinal unit, like this specialist spinal area. <laughs> we're getting to the end of the list. Oh, I'm the psychologist. Sophia. I refuse! No! Oh. <laughs> I'm a nice psychologist now. Hi, I'm just going to set you up for a little bit. Is that okay? So I'm just going to do a little test with you to see if you have a traumatic brain injury. So, at the end of the day, can you please recite these three things to me? A golf course, a key, and a sandwich. Okay. She forgot to come and test me! <laughs> <laughs> so I was remembering these three things for like two weeks and then I saw her again and I was like, yo, golf course key sandwich, how long am I remembering this? And she's like, did I not come and test you that evening? She's like, wow, you very much passed then if you can remember it for this long. <laughs> so I definitely don't have a brain injury. You excelled. <laughs> Every now and then I fall apart. Whoa, that was an excellent harmony.